Hi friends, I'm very happy to see you here. I'm Uma Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. I host videos on media, communication, social theories and research on this channel. People respond differently to different persuasive messages. Richard Petty and John Cocciopo proposed the elaboration likelihood model in the 1970s. Let us see elaboration likelihood model the central and peripheral roots of persuasion in this video. In the central root of persuasion, people consider the core content of the message. In the peripheral root, they might regard other things like the likability of the sender, for example. Unlike single effect models, the elaboration likelihood model is a dual information processing model. Psychologists Richard Petty and John Cacioppo in 1986 developed the elaboration likelihood model. When presented with a persuasive message, people will sometimes put a lot of effort into their cognition. Sometimes though they rely on less demanding simple analysis. Everyone is not able to elaborate on information in a similar way. The model proposes that there are two main routes to persuasion. The central route and the peripheral route. The central route involves cognitive elaboration, which is a detailed and effortful processing of the message content. The peripheral route, on the other hand, involves superficial processing of the message cues. The factors that affect which route people take are how interested or involved they are in the topic. High motivation leads to central route, low motivation leads to the peripheral route. The next factor is ability, how capable they are of processing and understanding the message. Thirdly, how attractive, credible or emotional the message or its source is. When individuals are motivated and able to engage in cognitive elaboration, they take the central route to persuasion. Central processing involves careful consideration of the arguments in the message including evaluating the strength of the evidence, the credibility of the source and the relevance of the message. When individuals lack motivation or ability to engage in cognitive elaboration, they are more likely to take the peripheral route to persuasion. Peripheral processing involves using simple heuristics or mental shortcuts to evaluate the message or source such as relying on the attractiveness of the source. If the peripheral cues are seen as favorable, there is a possible weak attitude change. Cacioppo and Petty use the term peripheral because the receiver looks to less central considerations. The credibility heuristic is the propensity to believe sources who have credibility. The likableness heuristic is the receiver's propensity to agree with individuals he or she likes. The consensus heuristic is where the receiver is impacted by what everyone else is doing. In the mass media, for example, if the goal is to produce long-lasting changes in attitudes with behavioral consequences, the central route to persuasion is the preferred persuasion strategy. If the goal is immediate formation of a new attitude, even if it is relatively ephemeral, the peripheral route could prove acceptable. Media influence is hence a complex process. The effectiveness of attitude change through the central and peripheral routes depends on the individual's level of motivation and ability to process the message, the quality of the arguments presented and the relevance of the message. Typically, central processing is more effective at producing lasting attitude changes as it involves careful consideration of the content. The more relevant the topic, 
the more likely the receiver will think critically about issues involved. The variety of credible sources is another important motivation factor. When listening to several experts speak about the issue, the receiver will typically tend to centrally process the content. Another factor is the penchant for mulling over messages. Here is a schematic diagram. At the top we can see that on the left side of the continuum is the central route while on the right side is the peripheral route. It is related to the mental effort involved. So when there is a persuasive communication, if the listener is motivated to process, he goes to the next step which is about whether he or she has the ability to process the information and the type of cognitive processing. If the processing is favorable, then there is a strong positive attitude change. On the other hand, if the processing is unfavorable, there is a strong negative attitude change. On the other hand, if the motivation to process is not there, then we go for peripheral cues. And if there is a positive peripheral cue, it leads to weak attitude change. And even when the ability to process is not there in the first case, it leads to peripheral cues. Elaboration likelihood is a variable. The receiver of a persuasive message will probably use both routes. Persuasion can take place with either route. The two routes to persuasion are not mutually exclusive. As elaboration increases, the impact of peripheral cues declines and the receiver's issue-relevant thinking increases. Although the distinction between the central and the peripheral root persuasion is convenient here, one should remember that there is actually an underlying continuum of elaboration. The central root and the peripheral root represent idealized extremes. At the intermediate levels of elaboration, there are complex combinations of central root and peripheral root processing. Elaboration refers to the extent of critical thinking that an audience member gives to the persuasive message. The amount of critical thinking expended is dependent on two general factors. The first is the receiver's motivation and his ability. Ability is being knowledgeable about the issue involved in the persuasive message and not being distracted from the message. Motivation is a critical factor in determining which route of processing an individual takes. The more motivated an individual is to process the message, the more likely they are to take the central route to persuasion. The more personally relevant the message is, the more motivated the individual is likely to be. Affective states such as one's mood or emotion can also influence motivation. In elaboration likelihood model, ability refers to the cognitive resources and skills that an individual has available to process persuasive messages. Ability is influenced by cognitive load, distraction, fatigue and age. Cognitive load refers to the amount of mental effort required to process the information. When individuals are multitasking, they have less ability to engage in cognitive elaboration. When people are highly motivated or involved in a topic, they are more likely to use peripheral cues when the arguments are weak or unconvincing. On the other hand, when people are lowly motivated or involved, they are more likely to use peripheral cues regardless of argument quality. A person is evaluating a new technology product that is endorsed by their favorite influencer. This is a peripheral route. Central root processing requires both high motivation and high ability while peripheral root processing can occur with either low motivation or low ability. 
This means that if people have high motivation but low ability, they may still rely on peripheral cues rather than central arguments. Similarly, if people have low motivation but high ability, they may also use peripheral cues rather than central arguments. Thanks for staying along, friends. As always, it was a delight having you here. I'll be back with another video very soon. Till then, have a great time.